Hi, I'm Lee Teschler with EE World and Design World. I'm here with Cassidy Arstad, TI, and Cassidy is going to tell us a little bit about the demo we have going behind us of a power supply for a smart thermostat. Cassidy, um, tell us a little bit about why you need a special power supply for a smart thermostat, first of all, and then what are we looking at? Sure, so thermostats are becoming more and more complex as technology is developing. And everybody's wanting these smart thermostats that can connect to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth so that you can control them with your phone or program them. And so the need for more complicated power delivery is now becoming more and more necessary. And so typically our old thermostats ran on 24 volts AC. So now because all the houses have already been built, we have to retrofit all of the new technology to the wires that are already in people's homes. And so 24 volts comes in, 24 volts AC, and we rectify it, and then we step it down with our new buck converters. And a lot of thermostats are wanting a second source in case there's a brownout, or in case the old wires can't supply enough power. So we'll have battery backups, the ability to power it via USB. And so with all of our power mugs chips, battery chargers, fuel gauges, we can charge and power the thermostats and keep them up and running at all times. Interesting. So how did you manage to uh, power a smart thermostat before chips like this were available? What did they do? Well, smart thermostats didn't exist then, so instead they were just the basic mercury, mercury switches that were used at the time. And once the programmable thermostats came up, they just tried to keep them low enough power so that they could pull them off of the standard wires. But now with Wi-Fi, the need for those have developed, and they've developed kind of parallel to each other. I see. So basically what happened is they started to put wireless components on the thermostat itself. Right. And demanded, they demanded more power. That's right. Interesting. So can you take us through what's actually on this board? Give us a little bit of a, a, a guided tour. Sure. So the, the, the main ship is the LM5166, our new wide VN buck. It goes from three volts to 65 volt input. And that has a low IQ of 10 microamps, so we can make it really, really efficient. So even if you have a brownout, this thing can last a long time. Then we ore that power using a discrete with our FETs and comparators, and we ore that with USB power so that either ore can power the circuitry. And then we bring that to our BQ24072 battery charger, which has power path and dynamic power management. So if one source is not able to supply enough, we can merge two sources without having to switch over to one. So we can pull some current from one and some current from the other. For example, the battery or the wall, we can pull from both simultaneously. And then keeping a fuel gauge in there allows us to know when the processor needs to step down into low power mode and conserve resources by either turning the Wi-Fi off temporarily until full power comes back up online. Gotcha. Interesting. Um, can you take us through the demo here? Sure. So uh, here is where we'll house, we house the processing and then the LCD. And this is all of the power modules that I just described and all the test points I had on there when trying to test everything. The uh, two bulbs here. Uh, the red is basically your heater, the blue is your cooler. And so either from your phone or right here, I just have the touch screen, you can move the, uh, the max temperature down below the current one and you'll see that the blue starts to come on. So now it's trying to cool down your household. And then the opposite works the same way if I uh, move the minimum temperature up above the current temperature and you'll see the red come on. That's a pretty cool technology there, Cassie. Yeah, Thanks thank for you. taking us through it. Thank you.